Did you know that ancient medical practices weren't always as advanced and humane as they are today? In fact, some of them were downright horrifying. From using leeches to bloodletting and even drilling holes in the skull, ancient doctors sure had some pretty shocking ways of treating their patients. Today, we'll take a closer look at the 15 most gruesome ancient medical practices that'll make you grateful for modern medicine. So buckle up and get ready to be shocked. Welcome to Untold History Guy, where you can find fun, fascinating, and sometimes shocking chronicles of history. Join us as we journey back and uncover the untold truths of the past. Number 1. Trepanation Ancient doctors were convinced that drilling or scraping a hole in your skull with a sharp object could release evil spirits from your brain, curing mental illness, epilepsy, and even headaches. Yeah, you heard that right. They thought that letting some air into your brain was a cure. Talk about a headache gone too far. But wait, it gets better. Or worse, depending on how you look at it. This procedure was carried out without any anesthesia, which meant the patient had to endure excruciating pain. If that wasn't bad enough, they also risked death due to infections or excessive bleeding. Despite how horrifying it sounds, trepanation continued for centuries and across various cultures. Apparently, ancient Egypt, Greece, Rome, and Inca civilizations were all fans of this literal mind-boggling practice. Number 2. Bloodletting This horrific medical practice involved draining blood from a patient by making small incisions with a special tool or using leeches to suck the blood. And no, this wasn't just reserved for vampires or goths looking for a quick fix. Believe it or not, people thought that removing excess blood from the body with this procedure could cure illnesses like fever, headaches, and even mental illness. But here's the catch. As expected, bloodletting often led to serious complications like infections, excessive bleeding, and even death. So you could either die from your illness or die from the treatment. Tough choice, huh? I guess if you survived, you could count yourself lucky to have dodged both the disease and the treatment. Number 3. Leech Therapy During ancient times, leeches were believed to have some magical healing properties and were used to suck out bad blood from the patient's body. This practice was as gross and as creepy as it was ineffective. Believe it or not, Leech therapy was also used to treat skin conditions, including leprosy, and if joint pain was your problem, then leech therapy was your solution. Plus, it was also used to prevent blood clots after surgery. I guess you could say that blood sucking was the original vampire therapy. One of the biggest risks of leech therapy was infections, as the leeches were often reused between patients, and if that wasn't bad enough, there was also serious risk of excessive bleeding, which could lead to serious complications and even death. So basically, you could either die from your illness or die from the treatment. Tough luck. But hey, at least the leeches were doing their job, right? After all, they did fall off once they were done sucking your blood. Number 4. Mummy Medicine Hold on to your sarcophagus because this one is truly straight out of a horror movie. As if mummies weren't creepy enough, ancient Egyptians took things a step further by using them as a cure for various ailments like epilepsy and headaches. Apparently, the embalming process gave the mummies healing properties, so the ancient Egyptians would grind the mummies into a powder or paste and mix it with other ingredients to create medicinal potions. I mean, they had a thing for mummifying their illnesses too. And who needs modern medicine when you can have a few sips of mummy paste to cure a headache and wake up feeling alive in the morning? And if you thought that was scary, hear this. The bodies used in mummy medicine were often obtained through grave robbing or even murder and then were subjected to harsh chemical treatments and grinding to produce the medicinal powder. So not only were they using dead bodies as medicine, but they were also desecrating graves and committing murder to get their hands on them. Sounds like the perfect recipe for a curse, doesn't it? But hey, at least it gave us some great material for horror movies. Number 5. Treating Diseases with Urine Well, 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 if it isn't another revolting ancient medical practice, using urine as a cure. Yep, that's right, urine. Ancient doctors believed that by applying, drinking, or even bathing in urine, the body could rid itself of toxins and magically cure everything from epilepsy to the plague. Talk about a golden shower of healing. In ancient Rome, people even gargled urine in the morning for fresh breath. I mean, who needs mouthwash, right? Let's just say that using urine as medicine was a piss-poor idea that stunk in every way possible. Number 6. Forced vomiting. 
Ah, the good old days, when the cure for everything was a good old-fashioned purge. Forced vomiting, also known as emesis, was one of the most popular ancient medical practices that involved inducing vomiting to rid the body of harmful substances, and it was believed to cure everything from headaches to snake bites, and all you needed was an emetic herb or a feather tickling the back of your throat. Ancient Greeks and Chinese were big fans of this technique, and it was also believed to purify the body and soul in some cultures. Who needs a cleanse when you can just throw up everything you've ever eaten? Unfortunately, forced vomiting could lead to dehydration, damage to the esophagus, and a host of other health problems. I guess the ancient doctors didn't get the memo that sometimes it's better to just let things go. Number 7. Skull Binding Skull binding sounds like a beauty regimen gone wrong. This horrifying practice involved shaping the skull during infancy or childhood, using binding devices made of wood, cloth, or leather. Why settle for a regular old round skull when you can have an elongated one? In some cultures, an elongated skull was considered a sign of beauty and nobility, while in others, it was believed to improve spiritual abilities. But unfortunately, this process wasn't without consequences, as it caused excruciating pain, headaches, vision problems, developmental delays, cognitive issues, and even brain damage. I guess some people would rather have a perfectly shaped head than a fully functioning brain. Number 8. Flesh-Eating Ants In some ancient cultures, these little creatures were believed to have therapeutic benefits for certain conditions. By placing them on a wound, they would chomp away the dead tissue, leaving the healthy tissue intact, and it was thought that the venom and enzymes found in their saliva had anti-inflammatory and pain-relieving properties, as well as the ability to prevent infections. But don't be fooled. These ant bites were nothing to laugh at. They were painful enough to make you want to run for the hills. Plus, the risk of infection was high, and the trauma inflicted on patients was just antastic. All in all, it was a reminder that in the world of medicine, sometimes the cure can be just as scary as the disease. Number 9. Surgical Tools Made of Obsidian Can you believe that ancient doctors used to perform surgeries with obsidian, a type of volcanic glass? Talk about cutting-edge technology. It was especially popular among the Aztecs for skull surgeries and tooth extraction. And sure, it was sharp and effective, but it tended to shatter during surgery, leaving patients in a glass case of emotion. And to make matters worse, doctors often reused these tools without sterilization, which led to infections. I mean, who needs clean tools when you have an obsidian blade, right? These doctors really had a sharp wit when it came to using obsidian surgical tools, but unfortunately not when it came to proper sterilization practices. Number 10. The Use of Live Animals in Surgery Can you imagine being a poor pig, minding your own business, when all of a sudden you wake up in some operating room with a doctor trying to perform a transplant on you? Well, that was the harsh reality for many animals in the history of medicine. For centuries, animals such as pigs, dogs, and monkeys were used as guinea pigs for surgical experiments, often without any anesthesia or pain relief. And to add insult to injury, the anatomical differences between animals and humans meant that the results of these experiments were often as useless as a cat's meow. Talk about a rough day at the vet. Number 11. Amputation without anesthesia Back in ancient Greece and Rome, patients would be held down tighter than a treasure chest while their limbs were hacked off with a knife or saw, and you'd think they would at least have a bottle of rum for anesthesia. But nope, they didn't even have that luxury. Instead, they would tie a tourniquet to the limb to reduce blood flow, and the whole process could take hours. To add to that, the tools used were often dirty, leading to infections and death. What a medieval torture show, but without any TV audience to enjoy it. Number 12. Cauterization if you thought amputation was the only terrifying ancient medical procedure, you best brace yourself for this one. It's called cauterization, or as I like to call it, the ancient version of grilling, which often involved burning the skin or tissue with a hot iron, just like how we sear our meat on the barbecue. But unlike a perfectly cooked steak, this technique caused severe pain and often led to scarring and infection. To stop bleeding, ancient doctors would apply hot iron directly to the wound leaving the skin sizzling like a piece of bacon in the pan. And to remove unwanted tissue like warts or tumors, they'd use the same hot iron technique to burn it off, leaving a scar in its place. I don't know about you, but I'd prefer my scars from epic sword fights, not from being cooked like a kebab. No wonder they used to call doctors witches back in the day. Well, I guess we can add barbecuing to the list of ancient medical practices, and let's just be glad we live in the present day, where we have anesthesia, antibiotics, 
and actual medical degrees. Number 13. Tooth Extraction Without Anesthesia I like to call this one the medieval dental nightmare. Nowadays, we have fancy anesthesia and pain management techniques to ease pain after a day at the dentist. But back in the day, folks had to rely on herbal remedies or magic spells to ease the discomfort. Imagine going to the so in ancient Egypt to get a tooth pulled, and instead of a gentle tug, they'd use chisels and hammers like they were carving a statue out of marble. And in other parts of the world, untrained individuals would use pliers or forceps to yank the tooth out often causing significant damage to the surrounding teeth and gums. It's no wonder people would resort to magic spells to ease their comfort. It probably felt just as effective as any other dental procedures. So next time you complain about a filling, just be thankful you're not being held down while someone uses a hammer and chisel to yank out your teeth. Number 14. The Use of Mercury You see, back in the day, folks believed that mercury had some magical healing properties that could cure all kinds of ailments from STIs to mental disorders. But little did they know, mercury is actually a highly toxic substance that can cause serious harm to the human body. One method of using mercury was salivation therapy, where patients were given large amounts of mercury to induce excessive salivation, which was thought to help rid the body of the disease. But in reality, it just led to mercury poisoning, which is no laughing matter. Seems like mercury was more of a curse than a cure. Number 15. The Use of Shock Therapy Oh boy, ancient doctors had some shocking ways to cure illnesses. They believed that shock therapy could cure depression and hysteria. Therefore, patients were exposed to loud noises, bright lights, or sometimes hit with a stick to induce shock. But wait, it gets worse. In ancient Greece, physicians would put patients in water and send in electric eels to shock them. I guess you could say they were electrifying their treatment methods, and if that wasn't enough, in ancient Rome, electric fish were used for the same purpose. Shock therapy was also popular in ancient China, where it was believed that electric shocks could restore balance of a person's vital energies and cure illnesses like depression and schizophrenia. Unfortunately, many patients suffered severe burns, muscle spasms, and even death. I guess you could say these ancient doctors were really shocking their patients. Thankfully, modern medicine has come a long way from these horrific and barbaric ancient medical practices. So. What do you think about them? Share your thoughts in the comment section below and check out our other videos for more interesting content.